old golf clubs had a groove into which lead was poured into. Here I'm calculating the head weight prior to cutting. If you know the density of this wood, in this case maple, and you know the density of the material you're pouring in, in this case bismuth tin, you can use a formula to figure out what the head weight should be after removal of the material. So we want the head to be lighter, but how much lighter? So this formula will give us that information. Here I'm drawing the outline of the lead, first with a pencil, keeping the edge of the lead about 1 8th to 1 16th of an inch from the top and bottom. And then you just kind of figure out the end curve. Since I'm using bismuth tin here instead of lead, it's only three quarters the weight of lead. So the groove I create is going to be a little larger. So I can make that up by cutting more vertically rather than in a V configuration, which would have been more traditional. So the saw cuts only get me so far. The rest of it I'm going to stake out with these carving tools. You only need a couple of them. This is a number three sweep and maybe a number five sweep and you should be able to have uh, all you need. If you have a smaller width, you can get away with um, a poorer fit. And you know, you can make the curve fit your gouge. This is just an old brace using a center bit. Now, traditionally when you're cutting a mortise and tenon and you're cutting removing the waste for the mortise, you can use a, a drill bit to remove a lot of that waste. In club making, I don't think they did that because, they, again, they created more of a V configuration, removing most of the wood with two V cuts of the saw. Uh, but again, these walls are more vertical, so I'm using the brace and bit. Certainly on a putter, if you look at old putters, I've, I've seen a couple where the lead has been removed. The, the walls look almost vertical. You do need to pack a lot of weight into that. But a play club where there's less weight, you can have a more angled uh, configuration of the walls. So just removing the waste here. Here I'm using a straight chisel. It's important to follow the grain. Notice I flip the head around when I'm working on the top. Otherwise the grain's going to chip out if you're working the other way on the top. And this is a number nine gouge. I always sharpen it right before I use the leather strap to clean it up. And here we're just cleaning out the edges a little bit with that same gouge. Number eight might work as well. I wouldn't go any less than that. Otherwise a lot of it's going to chip. Back to the scale, trying to see how close I am. Still need some more work. I think I was only a gram short at this point, or a couple grams at this point. Reaching for the egg beater drill. This is a Miller Falls 2A drill. It's a little smaller than a quarter inch bit here. The, uh, these are anchor holes that will hold the bismuth tin in place or the lead in place and they go in different angles. So once you pour the liquid metal in, it'll insinuate into those cavities. Now, if you're using lead, I recommend after you drill these holes to use a screw to, to roughen up that hole. Here with the bismuth tin, it seems to bond very well. I have never had any problems with the uh, bismuth tin loosening. It binds better than, it, than the softer lead. So four anchor holes in this case. Interestingly, if you look at some of the oldest clubs, the anchor holes often would be pointed towards the neck on the one, one by the heel, which to me seems counterintuitive. So here I'm weighing one again, and I think, oh, I was very close there. That was where I was a gram short. So you kind of can figure out what you need. So I got it to my weight of 106.2. So it was, I had to remove about 11 grams. This is fast motion or hyperlapse.
of bismuth tin going in. I'm using something similar to clay here. And I'm just creating a chimney type of uh, effect. The problem is this was a little dry. I should have gone to the home improvement store and gotten some more. You'll see here I had a little bit of trouble getting getting it to stick on the on the toe. After a few minutes the bismuth tin was ready to pour in and you're going to start to see this stuff is going to start to leak through shortly. There it is. So the fits it in the shan. Got a leak here. And I, That's the first good. time I'm not wearing gloves, so I couldn't grab it and tighten that up. So I said, maybe if I pour a little bit more, it'll seal it up, it's but it didn't. A disaster. Now I got a big mess okay, on my hands. Let's see what we can do here. This is, uh, Get this back on. So just stay calm and we'll try to pour that back in. Unfortunately, it's solidified already. So now I got to work fast enough that the bismuth tin doesn't dry, uh, cool off. Um, it, even if it did, it will. If it, it is cold fusible, but I think the bond is going to be stronger if I could uh, get it me while it's still melted uh, inside of where I screwed up here. So I'm trying to get this thing to melt. It melted in a couple minutes, and I think it was still liquidy enough. I, I tightened up that clay a little bit more, and yeah, we'll uh, luckily it Ooh. sealed up. Well, all in it all, out. it worked out okay. Got a little yeah, extra by the toe that we wouldn't have gotten, but not, not that much. Bad. Not too bad. A lot of woodworking and crafts is uh, just knowing how you're going to fix mistakes. Stay calm. This is the Shinto rasp. I've been using this recently. It works a lot quicker than any other rasp. They're basically hacksaw blades that are crisscross. Now I'm using the card scraper, which works very well on the lead. I'm pretty much, I'm very close to uh, flat. Still got a little convexity on there. But it, the key is, as soon as you see the wood exposed right, and you have a clean line, you stop working that edge. You can still work the center part of it, but stop working the edge when you got a clean line. Otherwise, you're going to wear the wood away. So it's about one swing weight point, probably. I'll leave it, put the shaft on. So I'm playing around with this, trying to figure out how much more I need to take off. I guess I was pretty close there. Here I'm just adding some hand hammering to make it look more old or authentic. Not necessary, it's more for aesthetics. You could do um, a rasp. So that's how I put the lead into the back of the club. That's it.